property and wealth. And my argument is that this is where the intergenerational uh, debate really should focus on. Actually, the problem of affordability of housing is a very new phenomenon. If you were a young person in the early 1990s, you could either afford to buy or rent very easily. Now it's incredibly difficult. And in my view, it's a housing bubble. It's a housing bubble that didn't burst when the recession came and is now back to um, the pre-crisis level already and looks like it's getting worse and worse. So the research we did showed that actually the housing bubble doesn't work for anyone, neither young people who are desperate to get their first home or older people who perhaps rationally should use that money but empirically don't actually benefit from, from high property prices. So the challenge uh, for us, in, in my view, is to reduce the cost of housing. Uh, the biggest barrier to doing that is about attitudes. In this country, we have this perverse view that good is higher house prices, even though we can see all around us young people failing to get any good sort of home. It's that sort of social attitude that really has to change. Because this generation can't afford decent homes, sizable homes, they actually have children later. And many of them, a third of under 35s in the UK, are living with their parents making this, of course, even harder to have children to form relationships as well. So it's not just a question that poor people are suffering, it's actually a specific generation that are suffering. They're having their security removed and they're becoming more precarious. And that also has in itself a knock-on effect, which is that security allows us to take risks. Having security, having a home, allows us to start a business, as we well know. If you don't have those things, suddenly you become less of a risk taker. So we're going to end up with less innovation, less enterprise in this generation. So weirdly, there are positive sides, which is obviously that one generation, the generation above, who do have this increased disposable income uh, can enjoy it in all sorts of ways. Purchase wine cellars and go on holiday. I'm an early post-war baby boomer um, uh, and a reluctant housing millionaire as a result. That's got to be righted and in order for us to do it we need uh, a progressive uh, tax system which we don't have in this country. We have got to tax some of my wealth, indeed some of my income actually as well. Uh, we've got to make sure that a good deal of of the money that my children are going to inherit from me is taken away from them when I die. And uh, we've got to make sure that when um, my second home is passed on, it's the capital gains on it are taxed, and there is capital gains tax on second homes. And we've got to introduce a youth guarantee. Uh, because fundamentally, we were sold a false promise. You work hard at school, you go to university, and you'll get a good job. And that means you'll be able to buy a house, and then you're able to have kids, and then eventually you'll be able to retire. And this is fundamentally broken down, as we all know, despite my generation doing our part. But this causes fundamental problems for the social contract. I feel personally let down, and at root I think a lot of people my age do. We're not trying to pick a fight with anyone, we're just trying to articulate our experiences. Um, there are tensions, but to get this right is going to require collaboration throughout the whole of the society and buy-in from every generation. Mm -hmm.